Hello, I'm Lucas Demogradichian. And I'm Chloe Abbott. And we're here to help you get your tech on. A one-stop shop for the latest apps, devices, and computer software, bringing you the current trends in media and technology. This is Tech On. Now on today's episode, we're going to be talking about going to other worlds within the comfort of a shopping mall. And no, we're not talking about fashion. This is Tech On, not Cash On. <laughs> what we will be talking about is virtual reality and its many uses. However, we will not be talking about VR in relation to at-home gaming. Because let's be honest, we could spend hours talking about that. And if you don't have a Scrooge McDuck coin bank to pay for, the, for a headset, this episode is for you. Now, if you still want to be razzle-dazzled by virtual reality, there are other outlets. Just outside the magical gates of Disneyland can be found a fully immersive Star Wars experience. No Disneyland ticket is required as it's located in downtown Disney as opposed to the theme park itself. With a VR headset and backpack, you are transported to the world of Star Wars as a rebel agent. You and a group of fellow dorks, I am included in that group, I promise you, act as a rebel band together to steal some Imperial plans for the Alliance. And yes, you do get to shoot stormtroopers. And when they shoot you, you can actually feel that impact of the laser blast. It's some mind-melty blue pill matrix stuff. Maybe next time, Lucas, when you're done murdering stormtroopers at Disney, Paramount has been ahead of the game with the new ways to present feature content. In the studio, in partnership with Big Screen, worked with many different tech companies, Oculus, HTC, Samsung, and Microsoft to launch the first ever VR movie theater. The audience puts on their headsets, sits back in the theater, and enjoys movies in a similar but more immersive way to normal viewing experiences. And it's not just Paramount either. IMAX has released their own theater, the IMAX VR Center. They boast multiple locations all around the world, but we can find our local theater right in Los Angeles across from the Grove. These kinds of experiences function more like ticketed events, and they can sell out. What is exciting is that, unlike theme park attractions, there's no real way of replicating the experience through internet videos. They are more discreet, more mysterious. And speaking of theme parks, Japan has already been making lucrative entertainment centers that are built around the idea of virtual reality. On top of a Mario Kart VR experience that finds you in a tilting but stationary ride vehicle as you race with Mario and pals, other experiences are as varied as riding on a magic carpet to standing on top of a building as a giant robot. It isn't all fun in games though. VR can be used in order to help train future professionals for their careers. For example, you can perform surgery without having to work on a real, living, breathing person. There are simulations in order to prepare troops for battlefield. While the effectiveness of preparing people for the stresses of war has been debatable, industries are continuously finding new ways to integrate virtual reality into different fields for training purposes. With all of this said, however, virtual reality sales in the home have been considered disappointing by industry insiders. The thing is, we often see VR advertised as a singular experience. Right now, however, we are seeing an extension of the technology in more social settings. The VR attractions in Japan are beginning to draw in people that are not normally affiliated with the stereotypical nerd culture that VR is often stereotyped into. The practical uses as well show that where the dream originally was, which was gaming, may not actually be where the tech is used the most. As of right now, it seems like experiences outside of the home is where the tech is really going to flourish. But VR gaming is at the forefront of conversation with films like Ready Player One or Ready One Player or whatever it's called. <laughs> Speaking of stereotypical nerd culture, and that's all the time we have for today. I'm Lucas Dermogradician. And I'm Chloe Abbott. Be sure to tune in next time to get your tech on.